Eivor. I am still with you, drifting at the edge of your memory. You have tamed the Odin within you, but I have not disappeared. I am with you always, embedded within your Huga. Will you keep me in the dark until your end, resisting forever this side of yourself? Or could you learn from me, to better understand the world it was? The world I left behind, but not here. Not inside of those who would not understand what you are. Who we are. Have you not done all you can for your people? Say your goodbyes. And set forth for distant shores and new adventures. Fascinating. Eivor grapples with Odin's memories in a way unfamiliar to me. My own struggle with Loki was intense but brief, ending with a a mutual understanding of who we were. Where will this new conflict take you, I wonder? This calls for a bit of animus magic, I think. Searching for future memories filtered by emotional intensity, grief, longing, sadness. Here we are, a few images from the future. Let's see where Aver leads us. Have you given my offer some greater thought? No, Hytham. I have not. Then I will ask again tomorrow. <sighs> How does a heart so large hide in such a modest man? I don't follow. To work so tirelessly for strangers. Fighting not for yourself, not for your people, but for all the world. That takes compassion of a size I have never known or seen in others. Ah. <laughs> I thank you. Do you not worry about your own family? Or your clan back home? How did you come to be so rootless? I do have a clan, as you call it, but no family. I was orphaned quite young. It may be this lack that drove me to join the Hidden Ones. They have certainly treated me as a son. I too lost my family. But I gained another, this Raven Clan. I owe them my life, and I would give them mine. I feel the same gratitude, but on a larger scale. You see, anyone can join the Hidden Ones, and therefore everyone is worthy of our love. I admire your cause, Hytham. But I do not have the focus needed to carry forth your creed. My mind is often divided between the present and the distant past. And it will take some time to understand why. Ah! Is it time? Uh, forgive me, Eivor. We keep our training to a strict schedule. Of course. Carry on. And good luck with this lot. They are wild crew. Oh. <laughs> Have you brought me anything?
I need your eyes, my friend. Show me what lies ahead. This ship matches the memory fragment. I'm close. He faces the rising sun. Good. So, the rumors are true. The great conqueror has been conquered himself. <laughs> Eivor! How many summers has it been? <laughs> Far too many, friend. Something amuses you. I hardly recognize you. Is this the Guthrum I left behind, or some other gentleman? <laughs> The Guthrum you knew is indeed no more. Ethelstan, I am now called. My Christian name. Christian name? A new name for a new life. At the expense of all you gained. Uh, I have not lost as much as you might think. King Alfred and I have forged a lasting peace, in fact. He has taken Western Mercia. East Anglia is mine. We are now discussing the fates of East Mercia and the North. <laughs> the Danes, Eivor, are here to stay. With Christ as their Jarl. He is a powerful god. Within his sacrifice hides the greatest boons. Forgiveness, hope, love. Would you not consider hearing his message for yourself? I have no time to meet new gods. I'm leaving England, and I've only come here to say my goodbyes. Will you return to your father's land? Elsewhere. To unmapped places, in search of the unknown. Ah, an adventure worthy of Odin. You and he share a love for knowledge and discovery I have noticed. Share is not a strong enough word. <laughs> come then. We must drink and tell stories before you go. If they are to be our last, they must be our best. <laughs> place wrong time lord
king. Ah, oh, Eivor. You are welcome here. How does it feel to be home? Not as free of care as you might imagine. It has been many years since I reclaimed my throne. But I have never taken it for granted. Not since my time in the marshes. Since then, I have been busy. Guthrum and I are inching towards common ground. A treaty is forthcoming. Is that why you have summoned me? To find common ground? I hope to. You are one of the great lords of Mercia. And calling you a friend would be a benefit to all England. What say you to a treaty, Eivor? Naming you lord of all lands northeast of your settlement. In exchange for what? Your allegiance. Not to me, but to Christ. And to the order I have convened in his name. I honor your offer, Lord. And the trust you place in me. So here is my answer. You gave me this years ago. A beautiful piece. But it sits heavier in my pocket than on my heart. You refuse, then? Have no fear. This is not a new chapter in our conflict. I am leaving these lands for distant shores. You will have no more trouble from me. In search of new wars? Fresh lands to conquer? In search of myself. Ah. The most difficult destination on Earth. I wish you well, then. God be with you on your journey. I'm a bit full up with the guards at the moment. Yours may have to take another boat. You are Eivor, yes? Of the Raven's Flock? I heard you had returned. Not with war on your mind, I hope. War is never far from my mind, King Harald. But I have no quarrel with you. Good to hear. Have your victories in England satisfied your its for conquest? Ask me again in ten or twenty years, when the island is all Norse and Dane, and men have forgotten the name of King Alfred. <laughs> so what brings you here, to my shores? I come to speak of Stirbjörn. Of a man I call father and friend. I want to ask that in his dying days you will tend to him. With respect, with honor, and see that he dies with dignity. I will do what I can for the man, for he has been a loyal retainer. But there is only so much I can do. A man must care for himself. What you say is fair. Only watch over him, and if he should wreck himself in your care, that will be his burden to bear. That I will do. <laughs> Your army is impressive. Impressive enough to join? <laughs> no, not today. But who can say where fate will fling us? Indeed. Let us hope we both land on the same side.
just a bit. Young Harold has made quite a name for himself in our time away. Twelve or thirteen years, I think. Sigurd! Eivor! You are welcome here. Come! I got word that you would visit, but I <laughs> did not expect you so soon. Stout men huddled around a map with eyes as hungry as their bellies. Little has changed there. Eh? Yes. I spent half my life worrying over hastily drawn maps. But this is not a land we mean to conquer. It is a land in need of aid. Iceland? Yes. Our friend Ingolver sends word that his new settlement is in peril. Cold winters and simmering blood feud. I have agreed to send supplies and men. Enough to bring peace and ride out the winter. Eivor, it may be your coming here at this time to this place. It's a blessing from Thor himself. Would you and your brother lead this expedition for me? I cannot think of a better pairing to see this through. Eivor, this is fated. I long for such an adventure. Tell me your mind. Does your heart fire burn for another expedition? I'm grateful for the offer. But I have not come here to walk down well-worn roads. I'm here to say farewell. For once and all. For once and all? Are you leaving England as well? I am. Sailing west. Accompanied only by myself. To a land found on no map. For what need? I will discover that only when I arrive. But that is tomorrow. Today I would like to spend time in the company of those I love. And tell stories from long ago. <laughs> Beginning when? Long, long ago. You understand? Uncle, clear the room and bring mead and roasted minkfowl for three. <laughs> now, where to begin? Need your eyes, my friend. My God! So what we see of us? Ah, here we are. A final future memory. Will you not wait for morning? I must get to London by the week's end. A crew awaits me there. Not even a goodbye? Everyone knows I'm leaving. But not when. Does Randvi know tonight is the night? Yes. We said our goodbyes. <sighs> I wish I understood all this, Eivor. Do you remember my first visions? Before we came to England. Odin and Sigurd. The wolf. The Nordnir. Yes. They prophesied so much that came to pass. They were not prophecies, Valka. They were memories. My own. Or not my own. But lent to me by another. One who lives within me. My second Huga. Do you understand? I... I wish I did. For so long, I considered only two possible futures for me. Surrender to these malicious memories, or reject them utterly. But 
Now I see a third way. And as I grow older, it draws my interest. I want to learn from them. But I do not know where this path will lead me, nor what it might unleash. This is why, for now, I wish to be alone. I see. Thank you for your trust, Eivor. Embrace me, friend. Farewell, Eivor Wolfkist. May Odin guide your way. Not this time, Balka. This time, I will be guiding him. Asim, is it? William Miles. I asked to meet you in person. Face to face, you said. So here I am. In spirit, so to speak. So close, yet so far. A clever trick. Quite a trick of your own you pulled off. Resurrection, hibernation. Many years in the making, I suppose. There were some improvisations along the way. You've spent so much time in the simulation these past thousand years. Why so eager to jump into another? A simple curiosity. It has been so long since I saw my friend Eivor. I wish to know how this grand saga concluded. Now you know. So, what next? Where will Basim go? As far as I can. Feared as much. Do not. I cherish the creed that guides us. I always have. But you people are infants compared to those I left behind. I need to get you up to speed. So, let's get started. Wait. If we are to work together, there is something I want first. <laughs> Name it. Viable genetic material obtained. Genetic memory extraction has begun. Estimated sequencing time, 29 days, 3 hours, 4 minutes. You are in for quite a ride, Mr. Miles. It's all so strange. And what of Ragnarok? The twilight of the gods? Are these stories true? In a sense, the great cataclysm happened, much as your legends say. There were earthquakes and storms, wars and famine. My people died out. Yours thrived. But you say there were no gods as we know them. So what natural force could cause such an upheaval? How to explain? 
Does the term solar flare mean anything to you? I don't think so. This may take some time to describe. <laughs> Not a problem. Time is all we have left, old father. It's quiet here. A lovely place to live. Not much left to learn from all this. Non-empathic art. That's rather dull. <laughs> 